Hello and welcome to the Valley Today. Yeah, be the music. The music's not working and the saw is on and I probably have forgotten something because you know, guys. Hey. This this whole being live once a month it really throws it all really falls rusty. onto me. It, yeah, it's all it's always your fault. So welcome to the Valley today. I am your host Janet Michael. It is Traffic Safety Thursday. Lieutenant Warren Gosnell is in the studio with us today. We're talking holiday safety on the roads in various forms. I understand all the way around. We're talking traveling we're talking christmas parties new year's parties we're talking about distracted driving impaired driving buzzed driving it's all on the list santa (laughs) has a list and so do i if you've been naughty you've been nice well it's not a lump of coal you're going to get for christmas it's three hots and a cot in the county jail well let's start with holiday travel but not really travel as in out of the area because i've been in town several times in the last few weeks and there's a lot of traffic just in town people are out and about they're shopping Mm -hmm. you can't go out on a friday or a saturday even a saturday afternoon or a saturday morning without noticing a lot more vehicles on the roads well you know the the world is waking up again janet (laughs) uh you know 2020 is becoming more and more of a of a distant memory um you know we we've talked before about the pandemic and its effect and and people have their beliefs about the pandemic but the simple fact is there were people who lost their lives Mm -hmm. there were people who suffered uh the ailments of covid or the symptoms and some still are yeah there are side effects of it there are people that that got jabbed people that didn't get jabbed but but needless of all of that because we don't want to detract from today's message i think we're starting to see not only that comeback as far as society getting back out and about being maskless doing encounters with other people other groups but i think some people are looking to make up for that three months, six months, year mm-hmm. that they lost, you know? Yeah. Um, and so I, I agree with you. We're seeing an increase in traffic as far as vehicular traffic. Um, Thanksgiving Day, I came out and, and I worked. Uh, the wife had to work anyway, so I was like, I'll work. My guys had the, the day off to be with their families. And for that morning, I was like, very quiet very few vehicles but by 10 10 30 11 o'clock yep the people were out and about now and that's before any early black friday things or anything like that uh i just noticed more traffic on the road for a holiday uh that sees most people once they land at the location that's where stay they stay at the location yeah. christmas day is a little different you know especially with with the modern family that you're we traveling have traveling to all the yeah. different family segments that you, you have you're not not only talking grandparent a grandparent b but step grandparent or <laughs> and other possible step grandparent and you know and then other family members and so we we tend to see uh traffic pick up on christmas day after that early morning hours but for thanksgiving it was normally a day where i noticed that traffic would remain light throughout the day till that evening uh, a lot of places have discontinued their Black Friday yeah, sales on Thanksgiving. Yeah, a lot of places Thanksgiving. didn't start anything until early Friday morning. Correct. And so uh, by noon that day, I was like, okay, traffic <laughs> is, is bustling right now. And so it, it it's a good thing to be out here and be visible. So, yeah, I, I think people are coming back from that now. And, and maybe they missed what they weren't allowed to have or couldn't participate in. And so they don't want to risk missing it again. And so with that, it leads us into, okay, we've got the first holiday of what I call the holiday season. Mm -hmm. It's about five, six weeks. Right before Thanksgiving through New Year's Day, that's what I call the holiday season. Uh, You know, we've got Thanksgiving. We've got Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Boxing Day in Canada. We've got New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. You've got at least seven or eight. I have a wedding anniversary. Well, see, and there there are probably a couple others in there that that I've even missed. But you have all this going on, and, and so during the holiday season, you know, not only will we see people traveling to places they may only go once or twice a year to visit family or friends, we'll see people who normally don't go out to celebrate things 
who will be, whether it's a, a work-related function, whether it's a, a, a get-together for your anniversary with friends. Maybe it's a milestone anniversary. I mean, Tim, every year that he makes it is, is a, milestone a milestone in my book. Right? Every, mor- mean, every morning he doesn't wake up with a pillow over his yeah, head is a day to celebrate. That's St. Tim right there because, I mean, I struggle to get through 40 minutes. So. <laughs> listen, listen, buddy. <laughs> but you're right. We do. We get back. We get out more probably than we would mm-hmm. even if we wanted to stay home. I'm still doing a lot of online stuff and having UPS or Amazon bring well, things to my house. But And I'm not one to argue the ease of online shopping. Mm-hmm. Trust that. But but I can also tell you that it, it's a matter of look at the time of year we're in now. The temperatures are cooler unless it's tomorrow when it's going to be 60 and then the next day when it'll be 20. <laughs> but, you know, generally cooler temperatures with that, you know, that chance of precipitation that is not just going to be rain or such. It can be something that affects how you travel. My husband is listening and wants you to know that this is why he sleeps with one eye open. <laughs> I'm, again, I'm, this is not a show about that. <laughs> we'll have a show about that. We'll bring Tim in. There we go. There we go. Yeah, no, Me, Tim, ever. and you. That is never going uh, we'll to happen. Yeah, you're right. It. I mean, people, and I think too, coming out of the pandemic, people want to feel connected to other people again. And they're doing that, not always just going to in person events, but they're doing it be- and they're shopping that way. They're shopping small, they're going mm-hmm. to some of our local small businesses, which means they're out. They're on the roads. They're trying to find parking spaces. Hasn't They're that doing been a great stuff. benefit? Hasn't that I been a great so. side effect of everything that went through the people who were throwing their support behind local businesses and mm-hmm. local restaurants and such? And it's like, look, don't don't get me wrong. You know, I, I'm still going to go to to the major outlets and retailers oh, yeah. from time to time, but I I know some of these business owners and I know some of the people that work at these businesses and I know how hard the struggle was at times for them and how appreciative they are of the people who are help keeping them in business which helps their family but also helps the family of their their employees and mm-hmm. such you know it, it, it's a circle here it is it really is and I, I think sometimes people forget too and and i have this conversation i recorded next friday show yesterday olivia hilton and i in the town of strasburg did our shopping strasburg instead of strolling strasburg mm-hmm. yesterday and i think sometimes people don't also realize the further the the, the ripple effect that it has in shopping small because these small businesses these these owners are living in our community so they're donating to the sheriff's mm-hmm. office they're donating to our local charities kids they're, camps they're doing camping all for of that stuff and... which does make the community as a whole better well and and so when we let's tie this into traffic when we're talking shopping local and we're talking downtown Front Royal on Main Street, we're talking Old Town Winchester, mm-hmm. we're talking Main Street in Stephen City where the Stephen City outlet is located. There's a free plug for you. And, <laughs> and, and some of these other places like Woodstock, Strasburg, um, with the increase in, in the holiday shopping, this is their time of year. This is, you know, this is the bread and butter. If you've, yeah. got, if you've got a summer business, you know, that, that, that has a pool and a beachfront and all that, you know, that, that, end of may through september is is their bread and butter well for a lot of local businesses this holiday season yes is the bread and butter and so with that when we see the increase now you're going to see an increase in traffic and so that's where some frustrations can come in because you know where you want to get to you can't find a parking place well here's a spot it's a yellow curb says fire lane but i'm only going to be a minute You're you never know, only a minute, yes. First of all. <laughs> you know, if, if if everybody else is busy, what makes you think you're going to be able to park, run in, conduct your business, and get right back out? It, it's not worth the risk. But the bigger issue here, I think, is patience. You and I have had this talk yeah. so many times when we when we speak about traveling and, and people behind the wheel, uh, and even passengers, pedestrians, people on bicycles. Yes, people still ride their bicycles in, in this weather this time of year especially those diehard enthusiasts mm-hmm. you're talking about it gets dark now by 5 10 5 15 like dark yeah okay i don't like it you, and, and and up here in our heads when you see that darkness you're thinking it's later than it really you're thinking is it's nine o'clock when it's right. only a few minutes after five which means everybody you know that's normally just getting off work picking up the kids from daycare and all that is all still going on and so now we're trying to do this mass 
exodus, this this <laughs> dance, this this elegant movement. We're all trying to do it now in the dark, which which can be challenging for some. And so you add that in, you add the chance of bad weather, then you add in the lack of patience that that some of us display. You know, it, that's what leads to some of the road rage incidents. It what leads to making that error in judgment. Mm-hmm. Well, I've already waited through two cycles of this light. It's <laughs> changingly yellow. I can make it. You know, and, and whether you do or not, sometimes isn't isn't really the the point. Yeah. You know, if you know it's turning yellow, you you're required to prepare to stop. And when you decide not to, and then the blue lights. Not not those twinkling Christmas lights. <laughs> not the Kmart. Blue but the blue lights come on. <laughs> then, you know, it, it, who's right, who's wrong here? Yeah, you had to sit through two cycles. But you know what? That next cycle, you would have been first in line. Right? See, that, and that's my thought. That gives me a chance to check my text messages and stuff because I am sitting at a red light. So there I'm you not go. too annoyed with those. Let's take a break. All right. When we come back, I want to talk about the other thing that happens during the holidays, which is, we mentioned it earlier, parties, get-togethers, work get-togethers that usually involve some form of alcohol. Can we do that in the next segment? Yeah, I'm giving you some out. Going music. <laughs> we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. I'll get the music fixed during the break. We're live in the studio with Lieutenant Warren Gosnell from the Franklin County Sheriff's Office. Hi, I'm Jennifer San Pietro, a graduating senior at Mountain Vista Governor School, and we're partnering with our local environmental nonprofit, Sustainability Matters, to help you help yourself while helping the planet. Here's a sustainability tip for the day reduce the use of outdoor lights. Besides being a waste of electricity when you are not outside, outdoor lights can be super harmful to all sorts of living creatures. Lights affect the activity of bats, moths, and other insects, disrupt bird flight paths and hunting routines, and can even change amphibian mating behavior. It might not be feasible to get rid of outdoor lights entirely, but using a motion sensor, turning off the lights when you are not outside, or even using lights angled towards the ground can help you help out your friendly neighborhood nighttime creatures. Thank you for listening. This has been an ecologically exciting message from Mountain Vista Governor School and Sustainability Matters, reminding you that together we can keep the river clean and the valley green. Well, I heard about the fella you've been dancing You've been waiting for it. Some of you may remember it. Every morning at 5 a.m., hit me! And that, my friends, was Lieutenant Warren God's now reliving his glory days. <laughs> so, to, to, for people that may not know, you used to work here and were on the air. You did the morning show here years and years and years and years and years ago. Warren Gosnell and Jimmy Lee, the morning tag team. Did you have a funny name? Warren Gosnell. Warren it's Gosnell. funny, yes. <laughs> I Warren like Gosnell like and Michael West, the morning tag team. <laughs> Warren Gosnell and Brad Hilke, the morning. <laughs> some things changed and some things didn't. So yeah, as soon as uh, we couldn't figure out why the the music wasn't working, you're like, wait, I have it, I have yeah, an idea. Yeah. <laughs> All this I need is, is Mike Odell to give the intro there and then and the bell. Ask Kent Miller about the morning bell. Uh, yeah, I'll reach out to Kim and yeah. say, what do you know about a bell and gauze? <laughs> yeah, he'll tell you. <laughs> So we went to break. It's it is the Valley today. It is not the morning show with Warren oh. Gosnell. It is the Valley today. Janet Michael, Lieutenant Warren Gosnell, Frederick County Sheriff's Office. We've been talking about traffic safety because it is Traffic Safety Thursday. In the first segment, we talked a little bit about patience, mm-hmm. holiday travel, and not even just traveling away. Local traffic, just local stuff, and congested traffic. Yes, because because, because the the morning and and evening commute rush doesn't change just because it gets darker earlier we're kind of used to that it's the extra things Mm -hmm. when we're running to costco or we're running when you're not expecting it why are there so many people out (laughs) you know what gets me is the people that ask that that are out themselves it's like (laughs) where did all these people come from well you're one of them (laughs) you know have you ever been going down the road you on the occasional time where you're not working where you when you normally do and you're looking around you're in traffic you're like does anybody work anymore? <laughs> and then yes. you're like, okay, I'm off, so I guess they could be off too. I, I just need to pick a better day. That was me when I was heading to Navy Federal earlier this week to record yesterday's show, and it, I was like, where are, where do all the, do, does nobody work? Yeah. So. <laughs> 
So let's skip ahead and let's talk about the other thing that comes with the holiday season, which is typically maybe a little bit more imbibing. A little bit more alcohol is introduced into our activities during the holidays than normal. Yeah, and, and you know, we realize there are people that, that don't partake of alcohol, regardless of the time of year, but there are people who only this time of year may have some wine. They may have eggnog that may or may not have <laughs> an extra kick in it. You know, there are certain More things <laughs> they grew up on, you know, hard cider, spice cider, you know, things like that, that that are seasonal. So it's not that we're talking that everybody just goes out and starts tipping them up and, you know, buying six packs and, and stuff like that. But it is a time of year where we see that people find themselves in a position where they may be invited to or have their own event where alcohol does become a part of that event. And so that's how you and I met, Mm -hmm. was was through the drinking labs that that we had here at the radio station. Uh, The very first show we did was was a live lab where I believe you were drinking wine. I was drinking wine. And I will never do that again. Drink wine? Not in those quantities Uh, at that speed. (laughs) And so it it was a controlled environment. Mm -hmm. You know, we did set amounts for a certain duration of time to show the the slow build of effects and then by the end of that show how are you feeling Mm -hmm. and and it was to show people that you know and we preach the same message but there are folks here that that need to hear it because we're still having people who are getting caught in that net right you know and and when i say someone you know an innocent person i'm talking about someone who who had absolutely no intention of getting behind the wheel and driving impaired, but yet found themselves in that position and then later found themselves dealing with law enforcement. And and unfortunately, you know, the effects of that, the the court proceedings and such. And so we want to keep preaching the message for the, for the first reason is we don't want any traffic fatalities. Right. We don't want love to get through an entire holiday season and not have any of those to deal with. Virginia, if you were listening to the news at noon, Scott's report, Virginia had 14 traffic fatalities just over the the five-day Thanksgiving reporting period. 14. Now, now you say, okay, the Commonwealth, it's that's statewide. That's not many. Folks, I'm telling you, one is one too many mm-hmm. if your family is one of the ones affected by it. So so let's get that straight. You know, all right, 14 is better than 15, but it's, it's a heck of a lot more than six. Yeah. Okay? And, and so we don't want any fatalities. And, and unfortunately, we're not at a point yet in, in – in our society and in the safety features and in the driving behaviors of, of our society where we're going to see zero. But whatever we can do to, to keep that number low and to save the lives that we can is what we want to do. So that's the number one goal here. Prevent it. I'm getting back on, on the bandwagon. I don't want to hear about, well, you know, end of the month quota and, and uh, road pirates and you're just trying to make money and you're doing Big Brother and, you, you know, who are you to tell me I have to wear my seatbelt? You know, <laughs> stuff like that. It, it, it's like part of Scott's report also was the number of people who were found to be unbelted during this holiday reporting period over Thanksgiving that were injured and or perished that may not have. And and so it's not that we want to tell you what to do. We want to try to save lives. And there's a reason that we require infants to be in child seats. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why they're allowed to graduate to a booster seat. There's a reason why a juvenile in any vehicle has to be belted in. If they're not, we can stop you for it and cite you for it. Because right now at at the place they are in their progression. In their development. Correct. They're at a point where they need that guidance from you, the driver, the the adult passenger. And if they're not going to get it from you, then then we're going to help get it. But once you get to that age of 18 where you become responsible for yourself, yeah, you know, we're asking you to do the same thing because we don't want to be knocking on any family's door. So when we come to the holiday period and, and we start doing the checkpoints, and I can tell you on December 30th, In Frederick County, there will be checkpoint activity. Mm -hmm. You know, that's already planned. It's on the books. We'll be advertising it on our social media later, but I'll tell you right now, December 30th, that's a Friday, uh, between 6 and 10, 
There's going to be be checkpoint activity, all right? If you come through that checkpoint and you've been drinking, you know, we're going to check further into you. If you come through that checkpoint and it smells like you've been partaking of the newly legalized cannabis, we're going to be checking further into it. Because while you can now legally smoke marijuana if you're 21 and and you're allowed a certain small, uh, below one ounce of, of material to possess, and not be uh, breaking the law in Virginia. Mm-hmm. Remember, it's still a federal That's situation. That's still illegal federally. But here locally in the Commonwealth, while you can legally do that at 21 years of age, at 21 years of age, you can legally go out and, and have bourbon. You can have beer. You can have wine. Still doesn't mean you can get behind the wheel of a vehicle That's and drive That's what we're somewhere. talking about here. Um, and, and I can tell you this. Um, we've got some people with, with – False information. You know, well, you can't stop me and search me just because you smell marijuana. All right. Let's be clear. Number one, what I can't do is is search you or your vehicle just on the presence of the odor of marijuana in your vehicle. You're absolutely correct. But it's the same thing as if I smell the odor of an alcoholic beverage coming from your person as you're operating the vehicle. I can't investigate further to see if you might be impaired Mm -hmm. by anything that you've consumed, inhaled, taken, or a combination of the two. You know, maybe you're not under the influence of alcohol. Maybe you're not above a .08, the presumptive level in Virginia. But maybe along with whatever amount of alcohol you had and the cannabis that you've smoked, maybe they're combining to impair your ability to operate the vehicle safely. And when you come through a checkpoint, you're subject to the stop now. Any violation you have that I couldn't stop you for it on its a own. primary offense Correct. now becomes it, it's, open. It's, it's yeah. still a violation, and now I can address it because we're stopping every person. Mm-hmm. Which also goes back to what we've talked about in the past with dead tags, with bad in, with uh, expired inspections. Yep. All of that stuff comes day into one, play. It's a, the day one checkpoint. after expiration, it's yeah. a violation. When you come through a checkpoint or if you're stopped for another reason, those are violations that you'd be surprised, Janet, you may not be. The number of people who have actually questioned me recently – you can stop me for that? <laughs> you know, uh, we're talking about a, a year-old inspection sticker. A, a year expired. Well, you can't stop me just for that. Yeah, but I can. You know, and, and so if you'd like, you can come to court and explain to the judge that I really couldn't stop you for that one-year dead inspection, and he or she is going to explain to you, yes, he could and he should. But during the checkpoint activity, especially with the way we run it in Frederick County, uh, there is no unbridled discretion. An officer doesn't get to pick and choose. Right. We choose the location. We choose the duration of time. And then every vehicle is stopped and every person checked. And that way, everyone is treated equally and fairly. So if you come rolling through there without wearing your seatbelt, even though I couldn't have stopped you just for that, you are now being stopped for the checkpoint and you're subject to that. So getting back to the drinking aspect – If you come through and we smell the odor of alcoholic beverage or we smell uh, the recent use of of marijuana cannabis, the the burnt smell of marijuana, which is different than the smell of of the product before it's used, um, if we notice that, then we're going to investigate further before we let you drive away. Right. Now, with that being said, I've told you this before. You can go out to dinner and have a glass of wine. You can have beer. You can have a shot. You can have a mixed drink. You can maybe have two, depending on how long your dinner is, and you're still perfectly fine to drive down the road. But until I check further and make sure, then I have no idea because you'd be surprised, Janet. I'm looking over my shoulder. People can't see. (laughs) People lie to law enforcement. What? Hard to believe. uh, Hard to believe. (laughs) How much have you had to drink today, Janet? Go ahead. Tell me. I only had one officer, and it was four or five hours Uh, ago. (laughs) Two beers. I only had two beers. Okay. So, but yeah, and so until we check further, and you know what part of that is, Janet? And I hope people will realize this and take it for what it's worth. If you come through the checkpoint and I smell either one of those substances and you tell me, no, I'm perfectly fine, only had one, and I don't, I don't at least do something to, to at least verify that, and I let you drive away from there, 
and you go three miles down the road and you t-boomed somebody else in an intersection and they come to find out that you're a point one two you're point uh-huh. one five or that you did this you did that and i did absolutely nothing at that checkpoint there's a family somewhere that's going to try to sue me mm-hmm. sue the sheriff's office and anybody else they can for dereliction of duty because we had an obligation yes. whether it was in your best interest or not as far as your freedom it's always in your best interest as far as your life because i told you our goal is to save lives but if it's not in your best interest as far as your freedom and I let you roll out of there and that happens, even you, the person I let go, could come back and try to sue. Well, and all of that even aside, I know you personally. We were having this conversation out in the lobby before we came into the studio. That's also going to eat at you because your mm-hmm. conscience, your conscience is going to eat at you because you're going to feel like you should have, you wish you could have. So if you just do it, yep. it solves so many problems and prevents so many other tragedies from potentially happening across the board. And that's the bottom line there too. Again, the first thing is to, to save the lives. And so to do that, we have to take some form of action. Is the music running? It's not, but you don't oh, you dare. Don't what? you <laughs> it's gotta be really low. <laughs> really low? You know, I've had such a great time today. Join us again on Monday when the morning tag team will be here with your Yeah, nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Thank you for meeting up to me. I can't wait to see what my text from my favorite sheriff, Lenny Mulholland, says when this whole train wreck of a show is over. I hope this podcast (laughs) blows all the others out of the water. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. I'm going to keep listening to it. I will be back tomorrow. Uh, It is Main Street Berryville Day. We're going to talk about parking meter decorations. You don't have to pay the parking meters in Berryville during the holidays. Meet me back here for that just a few minutes after.